Hi, my name is Trevor Bagnall. Today I'm going to be taking you through the process that I use to winterize my boat. Now I like to tell a little story along the way, so if you want to skip right ahead to the winterization part, skip forward to this timeline in the video. Now, um, I've got an older boat. It's a 1988 Bayliner Avani. It's a 32-foot pleasure craft with twin engines, OMC Cobra kit, and 350 GM or 5.7 liter GM engines. Now I'm a few components and supplies short to uh, complete the winterization for this season, so it's off to the hardware store. Let's get into it. Finally, a nice day. So in order to winterize the boat, I'm going to need a source of water to run the engine. So I got to go up the driveway and fetch the boat. Just a little short. <laughs> now 
Now comes the fun part, trying to get this thing back down the driveway. Triaxle trailers don't like to turn too quick. And I've got a twisty driveway. nerve-wracking part. Usually got one ditch, one tire in the ditch at all times doing this. As long as there's only one. Good right there. And I'll put all them chocks on the front side of the wheels because there's no risk of it going backwards now, is there? So the order of the steps is important to make sure that you don't have to redo any of the steps along the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change out the fuel filter on the engines. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add fuel stabilizer to the fuel tank and then lastly before I even crank the engines over I want to change out the gear oil in the bottom end of the, of the, uh, the stern drives. Now the reason for doing that of course is get that fuel stabilizer in early so that as you're running the engines throughout the rest of the winterization process you got a chance to get that stabilized fuel into the engine so you're not getting stale fuel left in the engine. The gear oil we just want to have a chance to get the old gear oil out and get new gear oil in there so it lubricates everything well before we put it away for the season. So now that we have the fuel filter changed out we're now going to put the stabilizer into the gas tank. Okay. So this fuel stabilizer generally uh, like a liter of this stuff will treat up to about 303 liters of gasoline. Uh, now I've got a uh, 800 liter tank which is kind of a real bitch when you go to the pump to fill it up. Um, so I'm actually going to need like two and a half of these uh, fuel stabilizer uh, bottles in order to treat 800 liters worth of fuel. Now I've only got 600 liters of fuel in the tank right now. Uh, I'll get this fuel stabilizer added uh, in the proper amount and then I'll top up the tank so that I have the tanks full for the season and that way no condensation is going to form and get a whole bunch of water into the fuel system. Now just before you start this make sure do yourself a favor go clean your uh, your funnel out all that dust and crap that sits in there when it sits in the garage for the year you don't want any of that getting into your engine.
And now that that's done, let's go on to changing the gear oil in the lower sections of the stern drives. Tools for changing out the gear oil in your stern drive, very straightforward. So flathead screwdriver, you're going to want to make sure you go out and get one of these little pumps. It'll save you a lot of time and heartache and does a much better job than trying to fill all your replacement gear oil in through the top. We actually want to let this pump in through the bottom. Bucket to catch your oil and basically uh, uh, depending on the size of your stern drive of course uh, mine takes two liters of what the OMC Cobra would take was the high vis uh, gear oil uh, that's no longer made by OMC because OMC is out of business but uh, Sierra does a lot of replacement stuff for uh, OMC parts but any 8090 gear oil will suffice for the gear oil in the stern drive okay so with your bucket in place you're going to want to back this screw out until it comes out all the way and gear oil will start to drain out of it at a fairly slow rate now I'm going to put that back in there just for the time being this is actually fresh gear oil I've already done a change on this I'm going to put that back in but after you've got that plug out you're going to want to come up to the top here make sure this is clean before you open this up you don't want any dirt going down into the gear oil and down into the uh, the moving parts inside there so you would come up here and you basically back this out with your screwdriver and set that aside and just allow all that gear oil to drain out of the uh, out of the gear casing there so it'll take a while uh, smoke them if you got them um, but uh, give it a good long time to let that gear oil drain out of there you don't want to rush that it takes a lot of time for it to uh, drain out because there's a lot of little narrow passageways down inside those gear units so uh, take a break uh, and then come back after a while and it should be drained okay we've let that drain for a while now so when we go to fill this back up we're going to leave that pin or the, the, the plug out of the top of the, the, the casing Gonna leave that out okay now it has a little line on it there and that's the fill mark so we're actually not going to bother trying to fill this from the top it takes a long time to try and fill this from the top you can put it in and it'll bubble up and it looks like it's full uh, but really what it is it's just the air getting trapped down in the small passageways inside of there so best way to do this is actually fill this from the bottom so with one of these little pumps and you can get these at most hardware stores it's got a little threaded fitting on the end there and basically that just screws right in where that uh, drain hole is on the bottom hook that up to your gear oil pump it into the, the gear oil unit um, specs on mine says it takes two 1.97 liters so call it two liters and as you're nearing the, the specs for the fill amount you want to come up and you want to be you want to be checking the level on this quite often so I'll just leave that sitting in there thread it in a few and then look to see where it just starts to hit the bottom of the pin and then once it's threaded into the bottom of the pin I'll tighten that in all the way so that it's sitting at the proper level to get a good oil level reading now I'll pop that back out and I'm sitting right there at the mark with the oil level so that's perfect now it's a good idea to also go get some replacement uh, rubber grommets that fit in there rubber washers gasket there um, that joint is essential to be watertight of course as are all these ones now these lower fittings they're just a metal to metal seat on those there is no uh, there's no uh, grommet on their uh, gasket on this particular model but up on the top here there is and you want to make sure that that's nice and snug and a good gasket seal on there to prevent any seawater or lake water from getting into the uh, into the gear okay so we're ready to fire up the engine but of course we need cooling water to the engine now the water pump for the stern drives is up here on the top end of the upper casing of the stern drive it's fed directly off of the gear in the top here and in order to supply water when you're on dry land obviously it's not going to scoop it up out of the, the water that your boats would normally be in um, so 
you get one of these. These are available from the yacht store. Um, any yacht store should have these. That basically just slips around the bottom end of the stern drive like that, hook up a water hose, and crank it open. Now you should see water coming out of that telltale hole there. You want to make sure that you're seeing water coming out of there. Uh, it tells you that the uh, that the whole space is full and uh, it's it's definitely pushing water into the lower end of the stern drive. So now we're ready to start our engine. So what's been a couple of seconds for you guys has actually been uh, closer to 48 hours. Uh, I ran into a little problem in that the batteries on the boat had discharged and were dead. So we had to put them on charge and then uh, yesterday it rained so much I thought the boat was going to float away. So um, it also uh, was going to get down below freezing. So I ended up having to uh, drain down the block and uh, just to preventative measure just to make sure that uh, anything wouldn't freeze and, and do any damage uh, in the cold weather. So uh, it's warmed up today. Uh, I'm going to refill the blocks now. Uh, you have to refill this block. If you drain the block, you have to refill it from the top side here. You cannot rely on that pump on the stern drive to feed water because inside the thermostat housing that's closed and uh, that won't open uh, before this engine tears itself apart overheating. So um, I'm going to take off the, uh, the thermostat block uh, and the water ports and uh, fill up the engine and then we'll be ready to start it up. Okay, we're ready to take that off there now. And we can see that's bone dry. Oh. So, a few things that I like to have on hand. Uh, Lots and lots of thermostat housing gaskets. Uh, should always have lots of these on hand. Uh, you're going to want to do this each spring and each fall. You're going to want to open up that thermostat housing. These are really cheap. I think they're like less than a buck a piece. So uh, make sure you have lots of those on hand. And also, uh, I like to have uh, stern drive gaskets on hand just for being able to take the stern drive on and off if ever needed for any maintenance issues. And we continue to let that fill. And of course you want to let that get as full as possible. You don't want any air voids in there. And you might want to let it sit for a minute or two. Let any air burp out of it and then top it up again. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bolt the... Now I'm just reusing that old gasket for the time being. But I will put a brand new fresh one on in the spring before the boat hits the water. Okay. So now that we got the block full, we want to make sure that the exhaust manifolds are uh, full as well. So I'm just going to hold my hose up to that. Hold that up nice and high. Get my camera all wet. Okay, now we're going to go hook up the water to the stern drive and start it flowing. Then we'll start the engines. Okay, now we'll just let those engines idle that engine idle, I should say, and we'll let that come up to temperature. Okay, we got everything up to temperature now, so we're going to go ahead and shut down the engine. And now we're going to go and change the oil. So, it's going to be easy to see down in there on the camera. So, suffice it to say on the bottom end of the oil pan is where that drain bolt is. And I don't have a whole lot of space in there. 
So uh, I'm going to have to get a small pan to get in underneath the bolt, catch the oil. And uh, of course the oil filter is always in a nice spot on these and those boats way in the back there. It's kind of hard to get at, but uh, we'll get that uh, oil filter off and get the oil drained out of it, put some fresh oil in, and then we'll be back. Okay, so we're done topping up the oil there. Put that oil plug back in place. And now we're ready to fog oil, put some fogging oil into the engine to preserve the whole top end of the engine over the winter. So we're going to take the flame arrestor off, flame arrestor slash oil cleaner, or oil uh, air filter, I should say. Duh. And where'd that wrench go? Take that off, take it inside, give it a good cleaning, and now we're ready to give this thing a spray. Now I'm going to go start the engines, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect the throttle linkage so that I can control the throttle from right here at the engine, and we'll get ready to add the fogging oil. I just want to be careful around any moving parts. Now I got two cans of this fogging oil. Always have more than you need. You don't want to run out mid-job. And essentially, you're just going to spray this uh, fogging oil into the carburetor until the engine kills itself. Yeah, it's starting to run a little rough there now. Boy, this engine just doesn't want to stop. That's good. It means we're getting lots of fogging oil down into the engine. And then it's finally dead. A little bit extra in. Carburetor. And we won't run that engine again this year. Here's the flame arrestor before it's cleaned. It's filthy. And there's what it looks like after a scrubbing. But Watch the moment I put some compressed air on this. And all that dirt that comes out to the outside. So I like to set my air tool in there, open it up, and then just constantly wipe the outside of that. Now, it's ready to go back on. And now we're gonna go ahead and drop that back down 
over top of the carburetor and Okay, so we've tightened that flame arrestor back up. Put our vent hoses back up there. Missing that one on that side. I'll have to get another one for next year. And now we're ready to drain the block down again and get ready to put in the antifreeze. Okay, so now that we're ready to drain the engine down, there's four drain points uh, on these uh, OMC setup uh, engine. So there's the two drain points on the block, but then there's also the drain point here on the exhaust manifold. So that's just a rubber cap uh, over top of that uh, drain port uh, held in place by a clamp. So we're going to undo that, drop that down. Now, when we do that, of course, starter motors right underneath of that uh, on this side of the engine. Uh, not a problem on the other side, but uh, I'm going to go get a plastic bag over top of that starter before I drain that down just to make sure that I don't get any water in the solenoid or into the starter motor itself. And then the second drain point is there would be a set of, uh, on uh, uh, seawater engines of course, there would be brass plugs uh, built in. Uh, this is normally where the knock sensor would go on a GM350 engine. Um, and uh, we just basically undo that uh, plug and that'll drain all the water down out of the block and we do that on both sides. And remember this water is going to be warm so and drain the block so we'll pull these bottom drain plugs and we'll let the, the block completely drain there. And now we'll go over to the other side and repeat the process. So that's still draining out the bottom or dripping out the bottom. I'm going to undo these hoses again. And I'm going to do an undo all of these hoses this time, uh, including the water pump motor. Um, even though I'm going to put the glycol in here. I want to make sure I get as much of the water out as possible out of every nook and cranny just so that I get a nice even consistent mixture of glycol in there with no pockets of water on any low points. It should mix out all right but uh, better safe than sorry is what I think. So we'll pull back all these hoses, undo the water hose. And then this is the feed hose coming from the stern drive. And you can hear that glug of water coming out of there. So now that's dry. We'll take our feed hose. Feed hose is dry. And then the exhaust manifold hoses. These should already be mostly dry. And there we go. We'll just leave them aside for the moment. And we're going to take that 
thermostat housing off one last time. Thermostat housing comes right off. And now we're ready to fill the block with glycol just as soon as we plug all those drain ports that we just opened up a while back. Both engines have now been fogged and we're ready to put in our antifreeze for the year. Now, uh, you can go out and you can buy regular engine antifreeze, uh, Dex Cool or something like that, that will be uh, more than enough for protection, but you gotta remember that uh, this is in seawater service and that material is toxic. So an alternative to that is uh, you can go out and get yourself some uh, glycol. Basically, uh, this is, um, um, this stuff is propylene glycol. You don't want to get ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is a cheaper product uh, and it's used in plumbing uh, circumstances using plastic pipes. But ethanol, of course, is corrosive. You put that in your engine and you could possibly do damage as it sits over the winter. So uh, you want to make sure that you've got propylene glycol. Again, that's also non-toxic. They use it in uh, food uh, factories as a uh, heat transfer medium. Uh, just in the case it gets a leak and it gets into the food, it's not poisonous, okay? So, and if any of this is left over in the, uh, the coolant and it's not completely flushed out in the spring, a little bit of this gets in the waterway, of course it's biodegradable and it's non-toxic. Okay, so we're going to start filling up the block. All the plugs are back in. Okay, that's pretty much all that we're going to get into the block for the time being. So we'll go ahead, make sure our gasket face is clean. Put the thermostat block back down in place. And no need to really come on to those too hard at this point in time. If we flush this in the springtime, we just gonna take that off again, put a fresh gasket in in the spring. We just want that tight enough so it's not gonna leak any product out. Okay, fill up the rest of the pump there. And now it's just coming up the thermostat housing, so. Tighten these up starting one at a time. I'm going to put a little bit down in through this feed line. And that's just going to find its own level there. It's going to overflow out the back of the boat if you put too much in. That'll take care of the low point. And we'll tighten that clamp up. And now we're going to continue putting some antifreeze into the... Uh, these are the uh, OMC exhaust manifolds. So these will only fill up to a certain amount until they start flowing out the back end of the boat. So it's a good idea to have somebody with you when you go to do this part and you can uh, have them standing behind the boat and they can tell you when they're starting to see glycol coming up the back end through the drain. That way you don't waste any and end up spilling a whole bunch of glycol on the ground. And I dare say that's enough. That's the port engine now, 100% complete. I'm gonna move over to the starboard side and put all the glycol into that engine as well. Okay, now lastly, 
before I close the boat up, um, everything's done as far as the engines are concerned. And uh, last thing that I'm going to do here down in the engine bay is I'm going to take out the batteries. Uh, now these are these uh, large uh, three cell batteries. They're heavier than old hell. I always have a hard time taking them out of here. So uh, they're strapped down. So I got to get them uh, unstrapped here first and then we'll get the batteries taken out. Those will go inside for the winter where it's uh, warm inside the house. And then I'll hook up the trickle charger to that uh, about once a month and just put it on uh, low trickle and just keep them maintained over the winter. I'll take those straps out. Go ahead now and disconnect the battery terminals. Of course, it's always good to disconnect your positive side first. Okay. So that's that side. Now, if your boat has crossovers, take care not to uh, allow your positive and negative to uh, touch each other if your other battery is still hooked up. breaker for the batteries. I'll make sure those turned off. Okay, now it's time to get that thing out of here. Oh god! So if you're wondering how I got such good lighting uh, for this video on top of the engine, well, uh, flexible LED light panels. Uh, I'll put a link in the in the video here so you can see uh, I've got a video actually where I've uh, show making these uh, panels. Uh, originally uh, the idea came from uh, uh, Matt Perks uh, from DIY Perks channel over in the UK. Uh, excellent uh, little bicolor video lights and makes for great work lights this year. And as you can see I've just uh, basically taped that up in place using some uh, tuck tape. They're nice and lightweight. Uh, take them anywhere, fit them anywhere. I got those batteries out. But they're awfully heavy, and if I try and lift those down from there, I'm going to kill myself. How am I going to get those down? If I had a bigger excavator, I could have made that all in one trip. Work smarter, not harder, that's the key.
Okay, and now I'll put the trickle charger on that and once a month give them a maintaining shot. So, you're wondering why I haven't changed the spark plugs as part of the procedure. My preference is to do that in the springtime after, uh, after I get the, uh, the boat out, get everything squared away, uh, flush the coolant, and get ready to fire it up for the first time. That's the, time, that's the point in time that I'm going to uh, change out the spark plugs. And uh, of course, it's important to make sure you get the right kind to uh, match up to the ignition system with these OMC kits. Uh, whether or not you've got Thunderbolt ignition or Spitfire ignition, you want to make sure you match the spark plugs to the engine and that ignition uh, system. And uh, just my preference to do that in the spring. Okay, now we got the boat strapped down tight. Take all this excess chain. Make sure that's up out of the way. And we'll go put this back out in this resting place out the driveway. Pros and cons of having a sloped driveway. One obvious con is in the wintertime when this gets icy, it gets to be a bit of a slip and slide. But on the pro side, it's a great spot for letting all that water that got down into the bilge of the boat drain out so that it doesn't freeze up anything uh, through the winter. So the water system in the boat needs to be winterized as well. Uh, essentially, I'm just going to uh, put a, a mixture of propylene glycol uh, down in the water tanks. That'll make sure that nothing freezes and breaks through the winter time. Uh, I'll blow out most of the lines and all of the drains on the boat are self-draining, so no worries, uh, no worries there. Um, the last thing that I'm gonna do, of course, is I need to get uh, shrink wrap uh, placed over top of the boat. Now I have the shrink wrap that I took off from last spring. It came off in one piece. I'm going to try and put it back on in one piece. And if that doesn't work out so well, then uh, there's a guy just down the road from me who does the application of the, the, the plastic shrink wrap and does a wonderful job, of course, keeping any of the rainwater out of the boat over the winter period. So anyhow, that's all I have for this video, folks. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you liked it, uh, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And uh, You'll get more content like this in the future. Thanks a lot.